lizard is, of course, one of the lot of interesting things about the French toad lizard. Um, it's up in the sand dunes, you know all these sorts of things. But what's interesting to the people who are out there is that, okay, there's all this hoopla about a French toad lizard. French toad lizard is one of 10 species of lizard that they have out there. We're gonna look at about five or six species right around here. This area of Southern California is incredibly diverse. The county of Riverside and the county of San Diego together have more different kinds or species of plants and animals than the entire rest of the United States and Canada combined. And as we all know, there's huge human pressures. Everybody's attracted to San Diego and Riverside counties. Everybody wants to live here. And yet, the biodiversity is, is one of the hot spots on the planet, and certainly the hot spot in terms of North America. And so this is why we end up with these conflicts of interest. People want to live here. People you know, want to have houses here. And yet, we have all this d diversity. And a lot of things are very, very habitat specific. And that's the trick, is to try to find that balance, of course. Um, one of the things I know you were saying, Kay, how they're th talking about um, hauling up some of the non-natives ornamentals that are being irrigated and, and give them away so they don't die. I'd recommend just dumping them. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is, is that, you know, we can, we can do a better job of, uh, you know, where we live in a semi-urban place next to, uh, you know, a you know, a, a pr fairly pristine desert landscape doesn't have to be a wall. It doesn't really have to be one and then the other. Especially a place like La Quinta, we can create a transition <coughs> where with xeric landscaping, planting native plants that not only conserve water, but also allow the desert species, the native species, to move in and occupy semi-urban areas as well, like the road runner, like the house finches, things like that. There's going to be a lot of birds, there's going to be a lot of bugs, there's that, that kind of stuff. And we'll also repel the invasives. Now some invasives, you know, while they're planted like the bougainvillea, it doesn't seem like uh, it's not to so onerous, you know, it's quite pleasant to look at. Oleander, very aggressive. But think also, uh, remember the ant story. I know over at our house, I live at Point Happy, we have crickets by the tens of thousands. <laughs> on our property and I've heard that there's a bit of a cockroach problem here sometimes in some areas of the cove. These are the kinds of things that would be repelled if we didn't do the irrigation and the lawns and the kinds of things that we typically think of as what we want to have around our homes in terms of vegetation and landscaping. And we